My first time. A fresh truffles trip report by Saver Serendipity, posted to the Shrooms subreddit two years ago. I finally had my first trip, and it was a pretty incredible experience to say the least. It was also nothing at all like what I expected. More on this later. It happened last night, and I'm still processing everything. I just wanted to write it down while it's still fresh. About me. 38 year old woman with no psychedelics or any other drug experience, other than a couple of brownies in Amsterdam. I've done some magic truffle microdosing a few times in the last two years, and live in Europe so it's pretty easy to get magic truffles. I was taking between 0.5 to 1 gram of fresh Silosai Prateros, Dragon's Dynamite truffles, along with Lion's Mane as it's supposed to enhance the benefits of the microdosing. I never had any noticeable effects on the microdoses though. A couple of times I took a larger amount, 2 to 3 grams, and felt some euphoria and energy for an hour or so, though it could have also been from the lion's mane, which apparently can also have this effect. The what? 15 grams of fresh pink paradise psilocybrosius truffles, taken in the evening after fasting all day. These are considered a pretty strong type, and 15 grams for my weight, 58 kilograms, is between a level 4 and 5 dose according to this calculator. For comparison, the dose I took is equivalent to about 3 to 3.5 grams of dried Liberty Caps. The how. I started out by taking half of the 15 grams to gauge the effect since it was my first time. Then after 15 minutes I took half of what was left, and after another 25 minutes, so 40 minutes after my first dose, seeing that all was well, I took the remainder. So in total I consumed the entire 15 grams in about an hour. I also took about 2 gram of lion's mane powder to take advantage of its complementary effect with regard to forming new brain connections. It stimulates nerve growth factor. I'd done a lot of research about this and prepared for the trip well in advance. I was home alone, but had a close friend on call in case anything happened. I also had a trip stopper packet at the ready. Dextro's tablets from the same shop where I bought the truffles. Emotionally, I was looking forward to the trip and excited about what the experience would be like. I trusted that it would be a good experience and that I would learn what I needed to learn, and that it was okay if I had some discomfort during the process, and to just go with it, and feel confident that despite being my first trip, my experience with the micro mini dosing meant my body wasn't totally unaccustomed to this. On top of this, I set some intentions for the trip, since I'd read that this has been shown to magnify their beneficial effects. My main intention was not to have a fun time, but to experience growth and consciousness expansion. I had some more detailed intentions around personal relationships and fully getting to know and accept who I really am, but I was open to whatever the truffle teachers wanted to show me. Also, I prepared a list of activities I might want to do during the trip, including music. I had several tabs open on my computer to make listening to music as easy as possible. I am very attuned to music, and I knew this would be a key part of the experience, to which it was. Also, I laid out some books with a lot of visuals on nature, travel and the universe, and a philosophical book in case I felt like reading. I also set up a notes page on my computer to type any interesting insights I'd have, and later I would laugh about all these preparations because my trip was extremely intense, and once the effects fully set in, I definitely would not have been able to read or type anything, even flipping through the visual books felt too hard to be honest. Anyway, now we get to the good stuff. The trip. Pre-trip expectations. Based on the Pink Paradise descriptions I had read below and my experience with the mini dosing, I expected a fun and not very intense trip, just with some visuals, some euphoria, laughter, and hopefully some interesting insights around self-growth and consciousness expansion. The Pink Paradise truffles are among the stronger truffle varieties. A warm blanket of love will cover you after ingesting these truffles, and the miraculous Pink Paradise truffles stand for love, connection, euphoria, warmth, and philosophy. The Pink Paradise truffles often start with some giggles, and this truffle has a mild visual and hallucinatory effect, but scores extra high when it comes to philosophy, euphoria, laughter, and gaining insights. Well, my trip was nothing like this. It was a hell of a lot more intense. 
I did not get any warm blankets of love or giggles. Instead, it felt like I got thrown into the deepest recesses of my mind, including ego death. I was thrilled to get such an intense trip though, as the consciousness expansion I experienced is exactly what I wanted, but it definitely took me by surprise at how intense it really was. As noted earlier, I staggered my dosage following advice for first timers. About 40 minutes after my initial dose, nothing much was happening, other than a feeling of warmth, especially behind my ears, and a slight feeling of lightheadedness and time slowing down and tingling warmth through my body. I was hanging some laundry to dry, and I kept waiting for something to happen, but not much was really happening. So at that point, I decided to take the entire remaining truffles, and I was up to the full 15 grams. So, about 20 minutes later, about an hour and a half after my first dose ingestion, the feelings of warm tingles and lightheadedness and time warping had intensified somewhat, and my knees were going weak while I was walking around. I was definitely feeling something physically, but I was still not feeling much mentally. I was starting to feel a bit disappointed, and wondered if staggering the dose meant I wasn't going to trip much. I looked in the mirror and noticed my pupils were very, very dilated, which is common with psilocybin, so at least I knew I was absorbing it. And I started to feel more and more disappointed that I might not trip. Here are some of the notes I wrote during this time. 8.35pm, time of first dose. 8.50. I ate a bit more. 9.15, not feeling much, so I ate everything. 9.20, took more lion's mane and a multivitamin, feeling warm and body feels a bit fuzzy, but mentally I am fully me. Pupils are dilated. 9.23, time seems to be expanding from one moment to the next, and the fuzzy, warm, tingly body effect seems to be intensifying. Hopefully this means the dose is taking effect. Knees feel a bit weak. Mentally not much change, mine feels a bit heavy, and visually I'm seeing some auras. 9.27 A tingly feeling in the ears and a heavy feeling is setting over me mentally. I feel the need to lie down and just enjoy listening to music. I do feel good, very nice, very chill. 9.41 Went outside for a bit, looked at the clouds, had some nice visual effects. Wonder if the visual effects have to do with pupil dilation. My body feels very tingly and loose, and it's getting harder to type. Back in my room, laying down, it feels as if both my brain and body are loosening. It's an all of a pleasant tingly feeling. I'm still in full control of myself. Hmm. <laughs> Soon enough, the last dose I took should take effect. I am slightly disappointed. I thought with this large of a dose, more should happen. But I'll stop typing for a while, and just fully surrender to the experience. During the next half hour or so, I felt more and more sleepy and was yawning a lot. Later I googled this and it turned out it was a common occurrence of psilocybin. I lay in bed listening to music and kept paying attention to notice any insights or interesting mental changes. Mm, nothing much was happening though. No visuals either. I kept thinking that this is nothing like what I had hoped, that nothing interesting was happening mentally, and maybe this whole thing was a failure and I won't have a trip. Well, these were my famous last words. Because soon after that, around the two hour mark after my initial dose at 10.30pm, about an hour after my last dose, I was gone. Totally gone. Thrown into the deep end. At some point before this happened, I remember trying to analyse what I was feeling and experiencing and looking for insight. And then I had this sudden thought to stop trying to control the experience, stop trying to assign labels to what I was feeling. Okay, no more labels, just everything that happens right now is okay, I thought to myself. And the response I got was, even saying everything is okay is still trying to assign labels and thus exert control. And maybe this is now my lesson, to stop trying to control and just totally let go. I decided that was good, and that is what I should do, and just allow the mushrooms to do the thing. Over the next couple of hours, I got what I can only call, wipeout. Lost all sense of time, and I lost all energy for anything. All I could do was lie in bed with eyes closed, listening to music. Honestly, it was like a trance state of sorts. Like when you have a really high fever and you're almost asleep but not quite, in this dreamlike state with little to no conscious awareness. A bit after this trance started, I had a brief period of awareness, and in my dreamlike wiped out state, I remember thinking, ah, well, I'm definitely tripping now. Before the trance started, I lay in bed and I tried to record a video with some thoughts about the experience, but even talking had become exceedingly difficult. It felt like the verbalising, thinking part of my brain had turned into mush, which is also how my body felt. Even smiling felt too difficult. 
I tried to flip through some of the visual books I'd prepared, and even picking up the book and flipping the pages felt like a huge effort. I thought of typing out some more impressions, but typing had become impossible. I could not manage to muster any energy for it, which honestly left me quite frustrated that I would lose out on any interesting insights. And I suddenly got the feeling to stop trying to control and just go with the experience and experience it insight again. Over the next couple of hours, I was mostly in a no thinking state. Absolutely all energy was gone from my body and I was totally inward, having no idea what happened in my mind because it felt like the thinking verbalizing part of my mind was completely shut down, which turned out to be a crucial part of the experience in the end. As I started to come out of the trance, or maybe also during, I really had no sense of time, I had some brief moments of awareness when I became aware that I was in a pure state of being. It felt like all the labels, the mind assigns were gone. I felt like I was totally powerless to do anything other than go inward. At some point during the trance, I thought it was very funny that I thought I could actually type out at all. I am particularly attuned to beat heavy music, and that is what I was listening to. DJ Chrissy's mix is an example of the music I was listening to during my two hour trance. I felt it played a huge role in the experience. Later, after I came out of the trance, but was still tripping for four more hours, I switched to softer music including some of the Magic Mushrooms music videos on YouTube. After two hours, 12.30am, I started regaining more conscious awareness and came out of the trance. I was able to text my on-call friend. The whole blanket of warm love thing was a lie, lol. This is way more intense. My awareness allowed me to start having some thoughts again. I'd been in a mostly no thought state during the two hour trance. I spent the next three hours still in bed listening to music, just experiencing the state of being with the thinking, labelling, categorising, judging part of my brain shut down, but awake enough to allow me to form some thoughts, unlike during the trance. Other than this more aware state, I still had absolutely no energy for anything other than to lie in bed listening to music. About four hours in, I thought about everything I read about people doing all kinds of activities during a trip. I thought, well, how can they even do that? because I was totally gone. All I managed to do was go to the bathroom at one point and dance for 30 seconds to see what it was like during a trip. Dancing is my biggest passion. And you know what, it was extremely difficult to stand up. So before I knew it, I was quickly back in bed. Now, on to the insights I had during the next three to four hours after I came out of the trance. Losing your five senses and getting close to just being, feeling at a deep level, hard to put into language, Feeling all the layers of conditioning as to who you are and who other people are, labels we assign to ourselves and others. Being stripped away and having a sudden deep realisation that each person, each being is simply another manifestation or representation of myself. There wasn't a universal love feeling or anything like that, which is what I'd kind of thought I would experience. I just had this sudden awareness about this all. That I and every other being is just a manifestation of consciousness having an experience. And suddenly, assigning labels or judgments to myself or others, or feeling things like jealousy or judgment toward another, felt absolutely pointless and ridiculous. When I became a bit more aware, because all of this was happening at first in the trance-like state where I lost almost all conscious awareness, I just was, the thinking part of the brain seemed to actually shut down. I wanted to understand what all of this means for connection, which was part of my intention for the trip and had the sudden insight that we think we are connecting with another, but in fact we are just connecting with ourselves, with another representation of the same consciousness. Then, I got a scene in my mind from a month ago when I had felt intense, even romantic jealousy, and suddenly, in a split second, it felt like my consciousness was switching perspectives between me and the two people involved in that moment of jealousy. Like suddenly I was them, and experiencing the scene through each of their consciousness, all in a matter of a split second. And then, I could just move back and forth at will, between being me and each of the two other people. And suddenly, even the idea of feeling the jealousy I had felt just fell away, like it was absolutely pointless. Almost like it made no sense to be jealous of myself, of another representation of my own consciousness. Thinking and experiencing like this suddenly felt like the most natural thing in the world. Like, of course it is like this. Of course it makes no sense to apply labels and judgments and negative views of another, because other people and beings are just me in another representation. I even thought even loving someone implies separation, it doesn't really make sense. I remember trying to dwell more on this. What is love then? And my insight was that really when we love someone and want to connect with them, 
it is really love for and a connection with ourself, with the same consciousness that is in each of us. And so, when I am connecting with another person, I am simply seeing another representation of myself. Here is person X, me, here is person Y, me, etc. Then I thought, ah, so this means that when I'm having sex with someone, I'm really just having sex with myself. While this was all happening, I was just letting myself go with the flow. But later, when I became more aware, I realised that I had an ego death. The actual term is not important to me, the experience was what mattered. I was not trying to have an ego death and didn't think it could happen with my dose. But what I experienced felt very much like that. The trip ended after about six hours. I realised I had energy to walk again. In the last hour or so, I felt happy about how my trip had gone, marvelling at its intensity. A question for those of you who are experienced psychonauts. Would you say this was a more intense trip than average? After the trip, and also today, my mind has felt exhausted. It feels like it was very intense mentally. Today, I feel a bit like I'm reborn. Like my mind has been reset. I feel more at peace, and more relaxed about life. I've been processing all the insights, and it feels like the overthinking part of my brain, which is usually overactive for me, and which was totally shut down during the trip, especially the first few hours, is much more quiet. There's a sense of calmness and relaxation, also as a result of all the insights experienced. After all this, I feel like I can have more acceptance and calmness towards the difficult people in my life. Also on top of this, I had some social interactions today and felt way more connected at a deep level to everyone I interacted with, probably as a result of my trip insights around the idea that another person is just me in another representation of the same consciousness. It felt a bit like I was really seeing the person. So, all in all, in a sense, perhaps I did get the universal love effect that the Pink Paradise promised, even though I did not get blanketed in love during the trip. Well, anyways, I hope you enjoyed reading this if you got this far, and happy travels. Truffle Torment A Sclerotia Mushrooms Trip Report by Hamo Posted to Earwood.org October 3rd, 2022 I've always been very enthusiastic when talking of magic mushrooms. I believe them to be a sacred tool designed to break down mental boundaries when these become too rigid. When I had my first few experiences, I was not in the best way, mentally speaking. I'd been quite a tormented teenager, and was riddled with inner angst and insecurities and fears, and though I'd already slowly started to come out of my shell, the magic mushrooms blew apart all my false notions and judgments and mental conditioning to the point where I lost the plot entirely during a trip one night at my friend's house, claiming that I was Jesus, then later thinking I was dying, all whilst trashing my friend's flat, headbutting a stack of CDs, sending them flying, throwing knives around in the kitchen, and I distinctly remember writing suicide on a piece of paper, only to watch the words squirm around on the page and turn into something illegible. Any meaning I could think of was in fact being spun into meaninglessness by the mushroom, and I remember thinking I was in hell. Hell is not somewhere where you burn and you hurt physically, but it's a place where you don't know yourself, and you cling on to things desperately, thinking they are real, but are forced to watch them crumble into nothingness. Hell is not knowing. Ignorance, primarily of one's own self. I was so intoxicated by this mushroom that I could barely conjure up my name or figure out who I was or what I normally do socially, and how I act and the resulting paranoia was truly overwhelming. My facade was blown. The mask that I didn't know I was wearing was off, on the floor, in pieces, and I didn't have a clue who I was. Quite literally, hell. But this torturous evening, horrible as it was, was a massive wake-up call for me. It was a rapid change, quick evolution. It was a horrible, nightmarish, yet fast and effective way to clear me of all the crap in my head and I felt like the mushroom took me back to a starting place and said to me, Okay, now we're finally getting somewhere. Well, now at least you know that you don't know, and this is a good place to start. After this night, I continued to take mushrooms but very respectfully, knowing that something about them for me was therapeutic, and I listened to their wisdom, and I listened to Bob Dylan, and in a way, during these few years that coincided with my early 20s, I suppose I experienced my own small personal version of what the 60s must have been like for the hippies. So, all this will hopefully give you an idea of how much I respect magic mushrooms, and how much I believe they can be the catalyst for spiritual seeking and spiritual understanding. 
But now, to write about my most recent experience with 44 grams of fresh truffles. High Hawaiians, as these ones are branded. I ordered them from a trusted supplier in the Netherlands. Sadly, my last few experiences with mushrooms have been, although enjoyable on the level of play and form and insight, also very difficult on my body now that I'm a little older, and this last experience may cement the ending of my relationship with them. I took the truffles late at night, around midnight, on an empty stomach. I've never been a fan of their taste, but managed to drink them down with some milk, which helped a lot, and there was only a small amount of gagging. My mental state was good, though I was tired, I must say. I would have preferred to have taken them the following night, but with these substances, I liked to have more than one day recovery period, and since the working week was not far off, I thought it best to do it there and then. I lay down on my bed in semi-darkness, and very soon the familiar body high and palm sweating and ripples in the furniture became evident. The trip was pleasant at first, as I just watched the closed eye visuals, which were beautiful, but I felt very unconscious during this trip. Perhaps I was too tired to be doing it. But there was a half-awake, weary feel to the whole thing which, unfortunately, took away a lot of the magic. I came to notice a loud buzzing sound that I'd assumed was real until I realised it was in my head. Something that I've read about and experienced before. It's like the noise of the mushroom, but it sounds like the hum of a fridge, only a little louder and closer. Then, there was a sense of experiencing my body from within, as if all the cells and organs were saying things like, Pass it on. Over there. You carry this. Now ah, your turn. It was as if the blood was vocalising the carrying of the oxygen, and there was this sense of this great engine functioning with all hands on deck. And someone at one point said, Oh, he wants to listen in, does he? <laughs> well, we don't really have time for that, do we? It was as if they knew that my awareness had altered, and I was there with them, but there was no time to acknowledge my presence. There was a very definite sense of hard teamwork going on with inside me. The buzzing sound at one point changed to a higher frequency, and had a sense of aliens checking me in a medical fashion. I can see where the alien experiment reports could come from now. These entities seemed to be checking my vital signs and monitoring me somehow. In what was possibly the most fascinating part of the trip, I felt like I'd entered some ultimate state of mind. The deepest part of my brain, where all thoughts or lives or entities finally came to rest. And I was up there with spiritual masters who had always resided there. And others, and it also seemed to be a place of all knowledge. And even though I had none, I also felt like I had it all. It was like I was both the starting and the ending place. I also had intense visions of Hunter S. Thompson who was there, but he was exaggerated like on the cover of his book Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. He was like this unhappy soul of sorts, reaching out to me, angrily, and I could see that he was in a bad way. But I observed him quite calmly and without fear despite his ghoulish appearance and the flames that seemed to permeate all around him. Slowly, I began to trip a bit less hard, and as often as when I trip these days, I feel like the mushroom is aggressive on my body and chastises me a lot for smoking, even though I'm only a very light smoker, mainly weed, though I didn't have any that evening. And it's often after a trip that I've been known to throw my cigarettes in the bin and vow not to touch them ever again, to which I did the same here. I had the sense of what the future humans would look like in a new world. We would be more alien-like and somehow more beautiful, slim, and elegant, and ethereal. We would be living at one of the planet, and our bodies would be less dense, almost not there. It was like we could fade away at any moment, and were all the more beautiful for it. Yet technology had not disappeared but was incredibly advanced and integrated, and was used in unison with nature, and everything was lit up blue and green and glowed with perfect technology, but there was no smoke or factories or pollution to be seen. This world seems glorious and radiant, but above all, peaceful. There's hardly even any need to speak. There is an all-pervading quiet and respect for life, and just the occasional smile from a fellow entity. I was led to feel that there was no place for smokers in this new world and I would have to quit and learn to get over it and evolve if I wanted to be a part of it. Whether any of this is a premonition, or just imagination taking flight, or both, I do not know, but it must have come from somewhere, and it certainly bore familiar themes touched on by the likes of Terence McKenna. Slowly, I began to feel normal enough, and I listened to some beautiful music through my headphones that sounded heavenly and welcoming. However, due to the fact that I have very bad acid reflux, chronic indigestion, 
All through this trip, there was a major physical discomfort in my chest that turned into breathing difficulties, and during the worst part of this, I felt like it was an all an incredible torment, like the stages of the cross, and my body could hardly take it. it. Felt like a form of karma that just needed to be endured though. I was half sat up in bed on one shoulder, hardly able to move and in no position to smoke or watch TV or listen to music. And this went on for what seemed like a very, very long time, and was extremely hard. And even when I began to come back to reality, this trip left me exhausted and run down. Now, it seems like a long time since a mushroom trip has left me physically and spiritually cleansed. It now feels like an ordeal more than anything, and very rarely do I discover new things about myself. Perhaps the mushrooms, which are hard on the stomach anyway, just don't go down well with people who have severe acid reflux. And it could be that this was the main reason that the trip turned sour. Or perhaps the dosage was just too ambitious. To be honest, I always feel I have to go as deep as I can into each trip. It is also my opinion, however, that mushrooms come to one like a spiritual master of sorts, when they are needed, and they are to be respected for what they are, but I think for me anyway, they are associated with a time of change and growth that took place in my early twenties, perhaps not unlike the coming of age rituals they have in Africa with the aboga plant. But I think that relying too much on these substances for enlightenment would in a way be ignoring that first message that the mushrooms gave me all those years ago. The clinging to stuff is itself the problem, so don't cling to me either. Infinite insanity and existence. A 16 gram truffle trip report by Loving Radiance, uploaded to Actualize.org July 14th, 2021. Set. Relaxed self-compassion and self-love since the one week or so. Setting. With my trip partner in nature on a lake. Preparation. I mix the dried truffle powder equaling 16 grams of fresh Fantasia truffles in orange juice and let it sit for 25 minutes. I met with my trip partner in the courtyard at 9am. He got another mix of the same dose. We drank the mix. I felt a bit sick already. I ditched the last few crumbles from the powder expecting to go insane if the last few ones were also ingested. The report. Come up. On the last few hundred metres to the lake, my friend recognises that the buildings and surfaces feel skewed when we entered a small new area. I say that I feel like laying down the instant we are done preparing the blankets and snacks. When we arrive at the lake, I already feel loosening of boundaries and an onset of slight general confusion. I feel myself losing grip on reality, and I resist the experience. I get into a mindset of waiting it out, and this is already in the beginning. Wanting to drift away from this experience, I plug my headphones in and listen to my music. It has a bit of an ambient and flowing feeling. We start to chat a bit. After some time, my body begins to shiver while I am letting go of the body and imagining to flow into the ground. I proclaim that I feel cold and put on the warm clothes I brought with me. The shivers continue, so I move to the beach into the sun. It's finally warm. No more shivers. I move to sit a bit on a patch of grass. Being warm again, I go back to the blankets and kneel on them. I feel as if I'm losing myself. I throw myself on the blanket, laying there without orientation, just waiting and waiting. I want to refocus on love, but love is intangible, nowhere to be found, although it's known that there is something called love. After some time of just laying around, I ask my friend if he likes to hear music. He says yes, and I turn on sleep, which I listened to earlier. Still laying there wanting to fade away and wanting to have this experience passing in an instant, my trip partner offers to draw tarot cards for me. I decline, because I fear a misdirection of the trip. I want to leave this setting with his presence. Being back at the sunny beach, I lay myself on the grass and feel myself being close to identity with death. I hold on to me. I witness that I hold on to the grass, not wanting to lose myself. Random words appear in my mind, like waves washing ashore. They feed and flow into each other through rhymes in a strange loopy way, because they don't rhyme at all when seen from an ordinary state of consciousness with no beginning or end, kind of like the alien language of Arrival 2016. I lose more grip on reality, I'm almost not there anymore. Losing grip feels strange. Imagine reaching out for a rock, you take the rock in your hand, by taking it, you grasp it because it has grip. 
Imagine mentally reaching out for an image or concept of any kind, like for example a rock. You hold it in your mind and grasp it. Imagine reaching out for a rock with your hand. You cannot get hold of it. It slips through the hand or it has an aura that makes it untouchable. Imagine mentally reaching out for any concept like a rock. It is just as untouchable as a slippery rock you want to pick up. My trip mate comes to check on me laying on the grass. He tells me that he had a crush on a good friend of mine a few months back. He was reminded of that because he drew the lover's tarot card. There is a recognition that I cannot really grasp the story he's sharing, and I say that we can talk about it after the trip. Again, I feel wanting to not be in his presence anymore and go back. I let myself fall on the blankets and lay myself down without taking off my shoes. My partner comes back and asks me about the shoes. I am non-responsive now, losing myself with more intensity by the second. I still resist the fading of the identity. However, there is no suffering in resisting it. It's just an automatic response of the ego saying I don't like that. It's still ongoing with or without me holding on. Again I try to relax into the moment and wait for the experience to end. I'm disoriented. The clothes on me are messed up and there is no mental capacity to make my clothes straight or to eat any of the snacks. My friend asks about kissing bruises on my neck, if they are done by a friend I slept with. He says, I'm glad it worked out with you two. I don't understand that. There is the interpretation that he talks about love between me and other, but love from others doesn't register. All I love is myself. There is no love coming from others, all projection is mine. There is a recognition of this ape body and bodily desires. Beginning to peak. The entire setting reveals itself to feel like a stage in a theatre. There's a knowing that illusion cannot harm anything. The realisation is expressed through words that I can easily kill myself in that state. My friend reacts confused to that coming out of LR's mouth. There's no difference, it's an illusion. It's the playing ground. Speaking in the direction of the partner, He's now casually reading that I'm insane and dead, no one was saying that, and that existence makes no sense. It's felt that the illusory brain is broken, speaking out that spirituality and more things are bullshit, meaning nothing and being nothing because they are created. Words come out, spoken towards a friend, but actually being directed to myself, which is nobody in that case. Just let go, it doesn't make sense. Let go, let go, let go. Being in existence, 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 seeing the world now without interpretation, feeling existence itself. Nothing but existence is direct, radical, total, and seen as naked. My partner picks up on that confusion. He seems to have a breakdown or an early midlife crisis. In that moment, I am not there for him. It is felt that he is an illusion being projected by me. The rhyming words which don't actually rhyme in ordinary state of consciousness are coming to the foreground again. The visuals are faint rainbow coloured random Latin letters flowing like blood in blood vessels across the trees and air. It's just a huge screen. My partner asks repeatedly if I'm okay because of the disoriented state I seem to be in. I seem to not respond. There's a knowing that there are question marks and sentences which feels like a child discovering what language is and there's no making sense of it at all. There's knowledge without understanding, like having an encrypted data file. Language is known, and there is something called England and Germany which have different modes of speaking. There's a knowing that the body automatically speaks those languages, and that the partner understands. Other people begin to come, children with a dad. I project the illusion of them, they are not real, they are part of the play. Sentences are clearly heard, but make no sense. There is a feeling that it could make sense, but it doesn't. Like hearing a foreign language but not understanding it. Like hearing sounds and not knowing what it is. Family constellations make no sense. Intangible. Remembering the family which this body is a part of. That this body is now insane and will be looked upon like a failed child that is now living in a mental institution. Looking from awareness, it feels like consoling a child that broke a stick. There is no fear or disappointment, there is just compassionate presence. There is a recognition that the projection of family and others in general is insane, even though I am insane. Timeless confusion. The meaning making structure malfunctions. It feels like trying to climb up a smooth metal wall, 
slipping down every time when trying. A completely fried brain, knowing of a body with skeleton and organs. Looking up, the tree branches and leaves seem to form an interconnected web. By looking to the headphones, they are recognised to be an infinite loop. Infinity is just casually being here. No memories, total confusion. Looking at wobbly hands. What is that? Wiped hard drive, like an infant. What is that? An energetic field around skin is felt to extend 10 to 20 centimetres from it, like an aura surrounding the body. The energy on the skin is connected to the mental state. It's flowing. The mental state could not be there without the energetic sensation. Come down. I am being asked to go home because my partner wants to learn for a class. I repeatedly say no. There's an arising sense of alien students having a university life. It feels like being in a theatre play and that the consciousness in the student body plays along. More children come by. I am being told to act normal. It feels like being an alien consciousness imposter in a human character who is involved in alien society and acts as if he knows what is going on. There is character play of acting, like things are normal, like brushing off dirt from the pants when in fact the world feels upside down. It's acting like being the character. It is told to my partner that I still don't compute. What is going on? Finally, my partner urges me to move as he felt disturbed by the newly arriving children. Packing all things together feels like an instant. Being told to tie my shoes, looking back to the place we were at. It feels clean like there haven't been blankets, snacks, etc. We were never there. Looking at his watch, he says it is 1.30pm. Time doesn't make sense at all. It feels like reliving the same day again and again, and time is just a creation to give the sense of many days being lived one after another. The whole trip back home feels like lasting just a second, even though it is not known where we go and why. It just flows. The euphoric mood is registered. The world is recognised as heaven. The body functions on its own. Words flow out. Their meaning isn't known, but they could make sense. Oh, nothing makes sense, and that's okay. Even that makes no sense. Taking the correct way back just happens on its own. There's no clue what and where the places we are heading towards at all. To be nobody is true confidence. Coming back home, I lay on the couch and watch parts of the writing on my dream board which interestingly bounce floatingly together and apart like being held in place. It's like leaves on a tree with certain parts of leaves moving together because they are on the same branches and at the same time moving independently to the leaves of other branches. There's no knowledge where the phone thing is. It can be that it is still on the beach. The possibility of it being lost forever feels okay. At the same time, the survival aspect feels inconvenient. Still laying on the couch, I am registering emptiness inside and wait for it to be over. I find the phone and then take a semi-awake nap. Still half tripping, I write to my partner if we could meet up in the courtyard to integrate the experience. I feel that grounding myself is just what's needed. The body feels empty and there's a want to be full, no matter if filling myself makes sense or not. Looking into the mirror and seeing the pupils being still dilated. Coming to him, I feel drained and devoid of any emotion. We talk, and I'm sucking up information like a child listening to fairy tales. Anything that he spoke of feels good. There is a want to speak of the experience. Not really to make sense of or understand it, but rather to express and put it out there. I see him without making up any concepts or stories. It is true listening while leaving yourself out of the equation. I recognise that speaking out what I want is then either manifested or not. I want to create the world. I request of him to get his blanket for us to just lay for some more time in the courtyard for more grounding. Too long didn't read. Regular understanding that nothing makes sense or has meaning and that just oneself creates meaning is peanuts compared to direct recognition of complete meaninglessness. One can imagine it, but it's more radical than anything because there are no memories to put no meaning into perspective and to create meaning of meaninglessness. The recognition of radical meaninglessness is contingent on the death of the identity. All experience is only you. There is no other. Options are A. Everything you feel is the body, 
there's an external world that is experienced through the body, or B, everything you feel is the world being recognized as you. The screen of awareness is an illusion, and that is recognized. Recognizing infinity is just a matter of consciousness. All of reality is a play. No identity is true. Feeling oneself to be empty is also connected to thoughtlessness. Presence and flowing into silence, infinity, timeless moment. Listening to Leo Gura of Actualize.org's video of relative versus absolute truth the day after helps tremendously to put this trip into perspective. Several years ago, I had a complete ego death and this experience is still deeply embedded in my being and everyday actions and perspective. First, I want to give you an abstract overview of what my psychedelic experience was like and what deeper direct insight the experience showed me. Please note that this experience was life changing and completely forced me to reconstruct my beliefs and solid foundations of what I thought what reality seemed to be. During that time, it was hard to cope with all these ideas and normal, regular life. I'm still giving it a place and will keep doing this my entire life, but it was both the best and the worst experience I have ever encountered. Nothing can be unseen, but with mindful intention you can transform what you make of things. For my trip report, I mainly want to focus on the important things I experienced, but I will give a general overview of what the set and setting was. Everything started on a regular vacation day. My friends and I had decided we wanted to try some magic truffles again since earlier experiences have always been really enjoyable and funny. On an empty stomach we all ate some truffles and slowly the effect became apparent. Some weightless feelings like being on a cloud while walking, increased colour vividness and perception in all senses. We all quite enjoyed the experience quite well just the total ridiculous, ridiculousness of being alive and that this substance or tool is able to affect the experience of reality so dramatically that it almost feels like the matrix. Morphing solid shapes, everything breathing like it is totally alive like one large being. These experiences often go with pure awe for beginners and can be an eye opener for, or something that destroys your world. Perspective is crucial in how you will experience life, and thus, having a broad knowledge is essential to be able to position yourself in life, even if you don't exactly know what real truth is. This is why I have great respect for all people that give their life to pursue understanding and knowledge. Becoming a sage is my ultimate pursuit. So, there was this moment in my psychedelic experience where I slowly began to drift away. I was standing somewhere against a statue next to some friend looking at this massive willow tree on a small island several metres away. The whole tree was illuminated by a light and I was slowly being hypnotised by its presence, the branches timelessly waving in the air. Before I entered this upcoming trance my emotion was pure indecisiveness due to some situation where my friend split up and I was not able to choose whether I wanted to go with them or stay. Eventually I stayed to look after some friends, but was thrown into this deeply hypnotised state. My presence was slowly merging with the tree across the water and I began to feel its history and future. I felt the cold of the winter and all the seasons that cycled over a thousand times, maybe an infinite times. I really cannot tell, since time slowly ceased to exist. Everything was fast forwarded like a time lapse, people walking by, the environment changing over hundreds of years until time came to an absolute end. Now reflecting on this experience, the force that drove me to a complete ego death or dissolution was the pure indecisiveness I entered it early with. My reality window or perspective couldn't decide what to experience or focus on and eventually I became absolute nothingness, 
This timeless state of being that was undifferentiated and a complete void was still perceived as being nothing. Now this is very hard to grasp and only direct experience can show you what true infinity and nothingness is at the same time. A nice sentence I like to refer to is, ultimate silence holds the greatest potential of invoking anything infinitely larger than itself. One of the most beautiful moments was the witness of the absolute transformation of non-duality to the duality. After an infinite amount of time had passed in the absolute non-dual state, there was a moment where two orbs of light came into my vision. They shared this dance, what felt to me like pure love and reminds me of yin and yang. From the non-dual unlimited potential arose the perspective or experience of two entities, both identical, and it was me who gave them their distinct identity. I felt that I was them, but also reflected on this from a distant perspective, which in turn created an experience of separation. Slowly my perspective began to zoom out or expand, and I saw that my entire vision was filled with these dancing energy orbs, until my complete view of normal reality emerged from this as if reality was built from these pixels and that the human experience is somehow at this current level of awareness. This experience was just pure awe, but coming back was the hardest part. Dealing with the feeling of being infinitely away from this reality and then coming back, you get overwhelmed with what you experience and at first I just freaked out. My friends told me I was away for a long time and this really scared me. I didn't feel safe because I still had to grasp what this reality was, how it functioned and who these people were. I wanted to go home because that was the only safe place I could remember. But luckily, my friends managed to calm me down. It was one intense ride for sure. The important part I want to emphasize is this conversion of non-duality to duality since it is the absolute essence of creation. I know this can be labelled as just an experience while being under the influence, but the message is clear. You only begin to fully grasp what real masters of the mind are talking about when they speak of enlightenment. It is really you who creates your entire world. Every value you apply to one of those orbs creates your complete experience of reality. Duality is the labelling system of the mind of how to identify anything and is built from relativity and perspective from all other values. Changing one value, as to say, directly changes the relation with all others, and this simply is your perspective or vision of what life looks like or gets experienced. Mindset, vision, belief are really the key to enlightenment and will only be revealed by true dedication, integration and pursuit of knowledge. Tell me what you think about this. Has anybody else ever experienced such a thing? I have the feeling that some people might have had the similar experience but were not able to completely verbalize it. One thing I want to add is that the creation for the universe by the Big Bang is exactly the same process. We arose from a timeless state and the universe as we know it was born by the creation of relativity or duality from this non-dual, indifferentiated state. Relativity is the core requisite of experiencing reality by using the ego. As relativity was born, so was time and the space-time continuum. Interesting philosophical questions arise if you take this as how this mental universe is created. Are there any real boundaries if there is no ultimate outside perspective? Who knows? Namaste, fellow adventurers.